What's up? I'm John Breyer, KG4AKV, and this is a story about how I got involved with helping a school talk to astronauts in space. On my YouTube channel, I have 13 videos of me listening to astronauts on board the International Space Station talking to schools. We've got, uh, yeah, this is Colonel Mike Hopkins on board the International Space Station, and I love being an astronaut. I love everything about it. I love the work. I love the people that I get to work with, and I love floating in space. Over. These contacts are facilitated by Amateur Radio on the International Space Station, or ARIS. In total, I've listened to 35 ARIS contacts, but I've never made a contact myself. In March, I started working at Red Hat. It's a short walk from this place. One of my colleagues at Red Hat, Jim Scarborough, KE4ROH, knew about my ARIS fascination. He happened to have a daughter scheduled to start at a new school on July 24th. By April, a science teacher named Mr. Hunter had e already emailed parents of students there to inform them about the school's science program. Jim thought it would be cool for his daughter's school to have an heiress contact. And knowing I was experienced with heiress, and already knowing who the science teacher at the school was, he approached me around April 3rd to ask if I would help him and Mr. Hunter set one up. I said yes, knowing heiress had two application windows a year, they were usually open for months at a time, but separated by months as well. And even if he got accepted, it could take a year before NASA might be able to schedule an astronaut to talk to you. Basically, I thought there was no way we were going to have to start taking action on this right away. In fact, it turned out the next opportunity for schools to talk to astronauts was in the first half of 2018, between January 1st, 2018 and June 30th, 2018. Remember, Jim started talking to me about this around April 3rd, 2017, and after we agreed to do this, I looked into it, and the application deadline for contacts for the first half of 2018 was in less than two weeks. The deadline was Saturday, April 15th, and we haven't even asked Mr. Hunter if he could do this. On Thursday, April 6th, Jim emailed Mr. Hunter explaining all of this. He was the daughter of Katie, who was starting at the school soon. He was an amateur radio operator and space fanatic. We should set up a station so students could talk to astronauts on the ISS. His coworker, me, had experience with Eris. Finally, Jim told Mr. Hunter there was a proposal window open now, but we should probably aim for the next one. However, Mr. Hunter was immediately and enthusiastically interested. He actually started working on the 15-page application that weekend. He wrote over 2,000 words of text outlining how the school already had educational programs which could mesh well with the goal of ARIS to inspire students to pursue interests and careers in science, technology, engineering, and math. For example, the school had already participated in a tomato seed experiment with the ISS to compare how tomato seeds grew there versus on Earth. He further described how the school could modify their existing programs to align with the goals as well. He suggested the school could even start an amateur radio club. I can't disagree with that. After reading the whole application, I was truly amazed and impressed with Mr. Hunter and his work. There was still more to be done, though. While most of the application was about the school and its educational programs, there were questions about how the school would support the ham radio and other technical requirements of the contact. After the weekend, Jim and I met at the school with Mr. Hunter to discuss these issues. Later that week, we emailed drafts back and forth and made corrections and suggestions. And on Thursday, April 14th, a day before the deadline, Mr. Hunter emailed the application to Eris. And on June 19th, we were accepted. That was only getting accepted. We still had to submit an equipment plan with our components of the radio station, the audio system. We had to take a site survey to check for interference to find out what obstructions were in line of sight of where the space station might be flying over us. And we had to test out our equipment and much, much more. I'll explain all that in part two of this video. And in part three, I'll have a video of the actual contact. But before I make either of those videos, I have to tell you about the sponsorship from Nordic PC and the new PC they got me. Here's a sample of that video. I'm John Breyer, KG4AKV, and I'm here with Nate Solberg, the owner of Nordic PC. 
and he's just delivered my brand new video editing rig. Storage devices, one SATA SSD on an M.2 and one PCI Express SSD on an M.2. Uh, so there are no two and a half or three and a half inch drives in this thing. It is just all on the motherboard. I just finished editing this video. Today is Thursday, February 1st. The contact has been scheduled. It's Monday, February 5th. It's happening.